car and here you are. Right. I, I, she said 15 minutes and I don't think it's anymore. So welcome Glenn and this is Donna Thank Miller you. and she's with First Power and she's going to talk to you a little bit about her company and um, this will give you plenty of opportunity to ask your questions about so that you can um, get started on your marketing plan. Perfect. All right. I've got some goodies here for you guys. So I've got some brochures. And then I've got some computer camera covers that I just thought I'd share with the class. Cool. Um, all right, so First Power, what we're trying to do with First Power is we're trying to help women use their massive purchasing power to drive positive change. Women make 80% of all purchasing decisions of everything. The idea being that women have been marching for equality for over 100 years. That really hasn't worked. We're going to try economics instead. That's what we're doing. So the idea is we're trying to get women, collectively, and men too, that care about this, to buy from the companies that either have a female CEO or president, or are half owned by women, or have at least 20% women on their board. So it could be companies that have, if you think about it, just 20% of their women at their board are women, we still want to send them their revenue. So you could get males in senior leadership positions, but if they want women in their organization, we want to support them, okay? So we've created a national directory of 750,000 women-owned women businesses across the US. We've worked with Carnegie Mellon to create a Google Chrome extension that allows you to find and buy from them when you're searching online. So if you pull up Google, you pull up restaurant, and you've got our extension loaded, it will put our logo next to the restaurant, and then it's a woman-owned, a woman-led firm. And then we've also created phone apps that allow you to find and buy from these companies when you're physically near them. So what it does is it puts them on a map, and you can look a quarter mile out, two miles out, five miles, or 10 miles out, and it'll show you the women-owned, the women-led businesses around you. Okay, and for the male students in the, in the room, you've got mothers, you've got sisters, hopefully you care about this too. Um, the other thing that we've committed to do, I, I was on the board of a battered women's shelter, and I don't know if you guys know this, but one out of four women is impacted by domestic violence. So one out of four. And what we've also committed to do is create a funding stream for battered women's shelters. We've committed 20% of our profits to go to battered women's shelters as a way of driving change in a lot of different ways. So if we'll collectively buy from the companies that support women, if we can create a funding stream for battered women's shelters, we think we can drive change in a hurry. We're just going to use economics rather than other kinds of pressure on the marketplace. And in my perfect world, at the end of this, we'd have a lot of data that says that now that people know which companies support women, they've changed their buying behavior by X millions of dollars. If we're able to say that to boards in this country, how fast do you think we can drive change? Make sense? So we're just trying to use economics as the pressure, and we think it'll be very effective. The other thing is we are positive, constructive, and most of all, effective. So um, I know in this political environment in the world right now, we've got uh, two ends. Nobody's really listening to each other. There's a lot of stress and strain, right, between the two parties. But green is green, right? It's neutral. And so if we will just use money and use economics, I mean, I think we can do this in a very positive way and actually make things happen. So what you're looking at here is you're looking at our website where you could search by keyword, again, for a business, and then on the second page, it would allow you to say, what zip code are you talking about? And it will show you the businesses there in a list on a map. Um, our app is having some trouble today, but normally you could just pull your app up from the app store and it'll show you where these businesses are if you shop from your hand, okay? So that is what we're doing. What questions do you have? Did your, does your website show um, the relationship with the battered women's shelters? Is that highlighted on your website? Um, it, here, let me go ahead and, and uh, scoot down. And by the way, guys, so we've got a relationship with the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. So the National Organization of Battered Women's Shelters, I've got a relationship with the person running all of that. And um, we have, again, I was on the board of the local shelter. And the um, CEO of that local shelter is actually on my board. So we're dead serious about this. Just quickly, the story behind this. My sisters and I um, are all former business executives. And um, we were on vacation a few years ago. And we started talking about this gap between women's purchasing power. Again, they make 80% of purchasing decisions. But we have around 5% of the CEO jobs and just about 20% of the board seats, 21% of the board seats. And when you look at that, you go, wait a minute. We're buying everything. Women buy absolutely everything, but we don't have any representation in leadership. Um, and the fact that one out of four women is impacted by domestic violence or sexual assault. And our mom was a, a survivor as an adolescent. That's why we care about this. I was going to look and see if I had anything on here. 
Um, and so when we started talking about those two things and we thought, what can we do about this? We came to this blinding realization that women could use their purchasing power to drive change. And so we're trying to provide a platform for them to be able to do this. And surprisingly enough, guys, this is a national company. I used to run the Women President's Organization for the state of Oklahoma. I've also run the 2020 Women on Boards event here in Oklahoma. And we are a national thing. If you look at our visionaries on here, it's most of the senior executive women in this state. So the people that might employ you someday, their bosses are, are investing in this company. Am I making sense? We've got some big companies behind this and some big names behind this. And you guys could get visibility. I, I know all of the executive women in this town and I'm a former vice president of human resources for Cox. So I ran the VP of HR group in town. So if you guys do a good job here, I know everybody. <laughs> I can help you with some jobs. Yeah. So we, we started in, we had the idea in 14 and then uh, we kind of languished for a couple of years. I was trying to pull together senior women across the country. I was saying, can we be the connective tissue between all of you? And then the march occurred in January of 17. And I said, oh my God, there they are. Those are the women that are gonna care about this. So I took 30,000 buttons that said, first power, we have it, let's use it to the march. Within minutes of setting up a table, I had six volunteers show up out of nowhere, several of whom were male. We gave away 30,000 buttons in three hours. And those buttons have since gone all over the world. I, I, I met a woman who was very, very powerful woman, the, the top 6,500 women in, in the world. There's an association of these people. And I met the, the leader of their foundation. And I said, I'm the first power. She goes, I've got one of your buttons. And my sister went to the uh, Galapagos Islands and somebody that was there with her went, I've got one of your buttons. So they went everywhere. And guys, just for reference, this is a little Oklahoma company that we got a shot at being global. Um, the other thing we recently had uh, the uh, global supply manager for Apple join us as our board chair. And her first comment coming in was, this is a global initiative. And it is. Because women spend seven trillion dollars a year in the United States, but we spend twenty trillion dollars worldwide. And no matter how women are treated in other countries, they are the ones still doing the shopping. They still have that economic power, even if they're paid way less. Due to changing the way it works, just economic based. Yeah, yeah. We're just trying. So even even these women in the battered women's shelters, or or not in the shelters, but even the women that are battered and abused at home, who's doing the grocery shopping? You know, they still have some power to choose how they use their economics to drive change. What are the what are the questions? So, so the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence. This is a video. I was out in San Francisco. I was at a, uh, a, a conference, and there were like 130 booths. It was Be Invincible. The mayor of San Francisco put it on, and um, Channel Two News came over, and they interviewed me because they said what you're doing encompasses all of these other things that everybody else is trying to do. We've got a way to actually get it done. Yeah, so I hope you guys do go to our website and take a look. So what do you need? What is the critical element to make this world work? What do you need? Yeah. All right, so guys, we need to understand how to better market what we're doing. When people hear about it, they love it. I get a lot of people saying, hey, this is a fantastic idea. And hasn't this been done before? And no, it really hasn't. But the problem is we're not really good at getting the word out. So. I, I need a marketing plan. I really would like a marketing plan, whatever you guys think that ought to entail, from the strategy to the what we do on social media, to what we do in advertising, to what we do in our newsletter or in blog articles or whatever, just how do we get the word out about this and get people excited? And I've got two separate audiences. So if you think about it, I've got the women business owners. I've got the business owners. Actually, there's multiple audiences. Let me change that. So I've got the big companies who are doing great things for women. So let's say they're making lots of efforts. They're getting all kinds of rewards, recognition nationally for Catalyst Awards, recognition by their peers, but the consumers don't know what a point of sale. We're the only ones telling the consumer at point of sale when they're making a buying decision that these are the companies that are great for women, okay? So I would say that the corporations are one set of uh, customers. The second set of customers is women business owners. So, and by the way, the things that they can do on our site is they can have directory listings, so they can, have you guys heard of a premium model before? You probably not. We get free, like, I guess LinkedIn worked that way, Facebook worked that way. They get a free listing and then they can upgrade it. And we can add all kinds of bells and whistles. So they can add audio files, video files, blog articles, you name it, coupons, events to their listings. Um, 
so the, the small business owners, what they get is they get visibility, they get a directory listing on our site, they show up in our app so that we're driving business to them when people are physically near them, and then we've got the ability to do some advertising both on our app and on our website. Yes. Premium, yeah. So it's so it's again there is a free level, and then they pay either ten dollars a month or twenty nine dollars a month to get more bells and whistles. And guys, we are a startup, so I've got some people using it. We are getting making some revenue. I've got to make revenue. I've got to make revenue. People love this idea. We're talking with folks about funding. I've got thirty one investors. Again, I told you that most of the major women in this state are my investors. We're now starting to talk to much bigger investors about much larger dollar amounts, and we've got to get some traction. We've got to get some revenue coming in to be able to get out those dollars. So you guys can help me do that, I hope. Um, so what about, okay, so you said the three markets would be, so cor major corporations that have a, that care about the cause, then the, the women-owned businesses themselves, and then the consumer would Thank be- Thank you, the consumers, okay. right? I gotta get the consumers to use it. And, and I, I get that right now, people may care deeply about this, but that is not enough to get them to drive change, to drive a change of behavior. And what I had thought when we first started out is I thought, okay, if, if they're gonna be able to give to battered women's shelters mm -hmm. by buying differently, if you buy the, way, the stuff you always buy, but you come through and you buy it from a women-owned business and, and we end up giving some money to a battered women's shelter because of it, is that enough to drive the behavior? And I don't think it is. I think we've gotta have more than that. So if you guys can help me come up with uh, what more would we need to be really effective, that would be helpful. We've also got um, affiliate marketing revenue coming through the Google Chrome extension. So once you download the Google Chrome browser and it shows you as you shop online which companies are women-owned and women-led, um, we've got something called skim links attached to that. So as you're buying things, if they've got a commission relationship with like, for example, Chewy Dog Food, they've got a relationship. If somebody comes with our extension and buys Chewy Dog Food, we get credit for it. We get about, we get a small dollar amount for that. And on our extension, we're making about 23 cents per user per month on the things that they're buying. So we've got a handful, maybe 100 people who are using it right now. But if we had a million people using it, it's $230,000 a month. So you're more really wanting people to have the app and have the power to buy things through you guys for other companies. Correct? So through other companies right now, is all, all we're doing right now is we are sending them to the company. And say these are women owned, women led companies. And then you get commission off the company that you basically send them to? It, through the Google yeah. the Google Chrome extension, it's got Skim Links has got a relationship with a variety of different companies that some are, some aren't women owned, women led. Okay. Doesn't matter if they're buying from one of the companies we're recommending. Okay. If they buy something and they're using our extension, we can still get oh, yeah. Do you have any famous influencers? No, that's something okay. else that we need to do. Okay. Yeah, and because I'm thinking what that would you know towards your targeting your consumers, and then um, do you have anything like uh like that? You remember you're old enough to know the Good Housekeeping seal of approval. Do you have any thought of that? So if I if I'm my manufacturing a tangible good, I put on there the first power stamp, or I put it on my if I'm if I register and and I got two businesses that I'll end up registering here after a while. Um, do I get an icon that goes on my website that says member of Purse Power? Yes. I do. Okay. So, so, so the other thing, thank you about that. So I, I talked to Pro, uh, Procter & Gamble. I was starting to talk to Kimberly Clark about trying to put the logo on their products. Because you go into the grocery store, there's two toilet papers, you pick the one with the logo. Right. It costs them $100,000 to do that. Wow. And so we thought, okay, could we do it electronically instead? So, so yes. So when somebody signs up for a free listing, and I probably can get on here and do that. But if somebody signs up for a free listing, they've got the code that's our logo on the bottom of the listing that they sign up for, and they can cut and paste that code and put our logo on their website. So do you vet these companies and the practices at all, or is it just strictly off the board? Yeah, so right now we're just saying it's those three criteria. And, and let me explain why, okay? So I did HR for 30 years. There's plenty of companies out there doing good faith efforts, right? Where they're saying they're doing great things, and in reality, it doesn't make a bit of difference. So for me, we're just saying, okay, can we create a line? Either you're in or you're out. Either you're doing it or you're not. And that's the reason why we did it the way we did it. Um, some of our competitors are going in and they're using the uh, women's empowerment principles for the, for the UN. And they go in and give an ABC grade to companies and they do a much more in-depth analysis. 
and I, I value that and I get that, but that's a really small population. You know, I mean, we're, we're trying to influence consumer behavior across the country. And okay, so who are the competitors? You made reference yeah. to your competitors. Can so, um, okay, so so uh, gender fair is the one I'm talking about. Um, How are you different? We're, they're doing this ABCD grade thing, okay. and they're also aiming at going inside companies and saying to them, okay, if you want to be a, a woman-friendly employer, you need to do these things. They do an evaluation, they do training, they so do they're consulting. Like, yeah. yeah. You know how many people they have signed up? How many businesses they have signed up? Small population. Okay. How many do you have? 750,000. Okay. Yeah. So I, you guys, this thing is like a chair with a thousand legs on it. There's all kinds of stuff we can do with this. Um, and for now, we're just trying to make it cut and dry. Are you in? Are you out? Are you on? Are you not? And I think that we'll go and do a lot more in-depth things later. But for now, we're just trying to drive business to the women from the companies. Are you looking for certain companies? Like, are you? I don't know what it is. Are you just looking for like like certain ones that you like, or is it just kind of like whatever you know? Because there's those social media mar marketing companies like Argon and like all that kind of stuff that like have CEO women and have all these things mm -hmm. that can totally direct that direction. But you also have like those ones like the corporations that you're talking about. Like, is there a certain one you're aiming for? I just want the really great companies. So, so guys, with the Women Presidents Organization, for example, um, you've got these companies. Wells Fargo is one of them. I'm talking to Prudential right now. We're talking to Sephora. We're trying to get these companies that that mean what they say. Mm -hmm. They don't just talk a good game. That they actually do have women in leadership. Yeah, and and we feel like 20% women on the board is a pretty low bar, right? Yeah. So, so we'll up that over time, or maybe you guys want to recommend that. Okay, you have levels. And if it's 20%, it's this, 25 it's this, 30 it's this. Right now, companies are signing themselves up. But the other thing is, so Claudia San Pedro, I know Claudia San Pedro, she's the president of Sonic, okay? We just added president or CEO. I would love to get Sonic as a partner with us and then roll this out nationally in every Sonic restaurant in the country. I was talking with Cliff Hudson about maybe putting it on their app. The other thing is we've got window clings or clings that you can put on your cash register that says this is a woman-owned business, so please support us. What if we had those at every single Sonic window across the country? Uh, Jenny Jenny Love Meyer with Loves has just become an investor of ours. We need to check and see if they qualify, but wouldn't it be great if every Loves had our logo on their cash register, logo on their door, saying that they're supportive of women? So. It's interesting, I've had some feedback where you get companies like Sephora, well, of course they support women. Or Avon, of course, you better support women, right? <laughs> Whereas you get a company like Nike or Skechers, for example, Skechers, I love Skechers, love them. I don't think, they didn't have any women on their board. I, I, the companies that have had trouble with women might be the ones who are most interested in partnering with us. Does that make sense? Even though philosophically, they're not necessarily in the same place. But my, our idea is if, if the revenue all of a sudden starts going towards the companies that support women, what do you think is going to happen? We, we try change very, very rapidly if the revenue is going towards the companies that put women in leadership, for example. And the ones who don't have women in leadership lose money, lose revenue. Are there trade fairs for women-owned businesses, entrepreneurship trade fairs, and have you ever done any of those? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so, so the National Association of Women Business Owners is one of the conferences that I've been at. And we had a booth and we gave away out. Nobody's taking my tchotchkes. You just guys not interested or what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They'll take anything. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. So uh, basically, these are women business owners and we have other conferences and we've talked about what we're doing. And, um, we, are those expensive to get into the trade fairs? Okay. Yeah. So you don't do a lot of them. No. Because you and probably what? How many? How many women businesses would be there? Uh, uh, let's see. That's a really good question. I mean, maybe six hundred. Okay, and you pay ten thousand to get in, or, or probably not, that, not much. that much money. It's, okay. it's probably about a thousand. A thousand. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out the, the cost per impression there. Uh, yeah. If it would be worthwhile. Okay. And I can, I can get you guys. I'll answer any questions you have in terms of just I can get a cost. Okay. So that's one. The Women Presidents Organization, those are all multi-million dollar women-owned businesses. Okay. And um, 
Huh? And of 950 women presidents from around the world, but that one cost you ten thousand so dollars. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. What else? What budget do you have, like, for your promotion? Because this, is, yeah, this is kind of a promotion play. I'm not seeing a lot, although I'm going to ask you a few things about product in a minute. But um, it's kind of a promotional play. So, yeah. Yeah, obviously, you can do some stuff with social media, which is pretty close to free. Uh, who does your website? Do you pay for S search engine optimization? And then what's your overall budget for promotional? Yeah, okay. So um, let's see here. So we have a firm out of India that does our website. Um, just for reference, I'm partnering with Zyant here in Oklahoma um, and a place called Reflections in India. So they're going to act as our kind of project manager and they always, they're going to help us get services out of India. And you guys, as a startup, you know, we don't have a lot of money to afford much, so we're going to try to do that. Um, they also are doing, the website folks are doing our SEO optimization. I don't think it's very good. I mean, when you look at, like, you do the web grader, we get about an 82, okay, on it. Um, do you know what your bounce rate is when you get to your, when someone goes to your website? It's about 60 or 70 percent. Okay, so that's not terrible. It could be a lot worse. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, that's yeah, not I didn't true. know that. Do yeah. you have any Instagram social media? Yes, we do. So, so we get so um, I've got some Facebook, Instagram. We've got nine thousand followers or so, probably eighty five hundred by now. Facebook, um, six hundred people or something. Is, Is it a like thing, like an event like or like like this page kind of thing? Uh, I think I like this page. And guys, I'm not technologically as savvy as you are. So I, I'm, this is something I need to learn. I'm big on LinkedIn, huge on LinkedIn. Um, okay. And when I post things on LinkedIn, I've gotten up to 6,000 people looking at it. Okay. So. so that's your main avenue right now is yeah. LinkedIn. So that's going to be geared towards getting the companies coming in, but it does nothing for the consumer. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And the other thing my board is telling me that they, they, we need to separate me from first power. So it's my social media, if that makes sense. And I, we need to make it be first power. Uh -huh. social media. Yeah. So is this social media yours technically? Is that what you're saying? So, uh, well, LinkedIn is primarily, yeah, it's through my account. And you guys may know how to separate that. Our, our board chair was going to help me try to separate that. So I had to attach Facebook to my Facebook somehow, rather than having a so yeah, Facebook. You can attach it to like a different Facebook feed than you do Facebook. Okay. So like one thing in Instagram and you like yours says cause on it mm -hmm. and that's like a business profile and that business profile has to be linked to a Facebook account and then if you don't want to attach it to your personal you just make a new Facebook account and attach it to your own. Okay. Okay. So I don't like that one. So we need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> and and guys the social media piece of this I think we're really gonna need your help on. Yeah. It's a huge part of it. Um you asked about products. Yeah, what I was wondering, um so really your product, that what you're offering is, is information. You're not doing, do you do like any blogs or any seminars or anything else to add on? So we've, we've got, a, we've got blogs that we do occasionally. I've done podcasts occasionally. Um, I, is it geared towards business help, help for women owned with businesses? Okay. Yeah. And what I've done is I've profiled our business owner. So we okay. have paying customers. Um, there is a group that I'm thinking about partnering with that has a bunch of um, online webinars around training women business owners. And we would be, here, here's the concept, guys. When I was with Cox, I was the VP of HR for Cox, is Cox talked about, is it more valuable to be stars or HBO or Encore, or is it more valuable to own the pipe that all of these things are coming down? Does that make sense? I think we could be the pipe. You're the pipe. No doubt. Yeah. For women. So that if, if you well, you know, Amazon's the pipe too, and they're doing pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, so the idea would be is if you just want to support women with your purchasing power, whoever you are, if you come to our site, I'll help you. And I would love for you to get a benefit out of that. Now I get, I get that having discounts and having coupons and stuff like that would help us, and that's something that we probably need to do. I talked to the CEO of Join Honey, and our extension is based on. I mean, that was our kind of a model. And so we could partner with somebody, for example, like Joanne Honey, to give discounts if you go to a woman-owned business through First Power that you, there's some kind of advantage to doing that. What are you guys thinking? I think we're mostly confused, but we need oh. to, to ruminate a little bit, think about it a little bit. Okay. I think, too, I mean, I don't know 
flooding prior to our own own business and I'm looking at your website and it's not being flooded. So like it and that's that's gonna be like you have a lot of like really great leaders, but your key good leaders are our age. Mm -hmm. And like we are so technology like based that yeah. you have to have leader to run your team. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably like if you had just a little bit more of like a aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, I agree. Can you pull it up again? Can you just move your mouse? So when, yeah. when we pulled it's this up, bad, it's not bad. Yeah. No. Yeah. But when we pulled this up on Thursday, one of the comments, oh, I'm going to have to log you back in. One of the comments was the, um, the arrow that was clicking, click here or something like that. Their perception of that, that was that that was kind of um, sleazy. Not sleazy, but, <laughs> but it, I mean, it, it was negative, right? You had sort of that. What did you say? It remi like it kind of reminds you of those ads that they want you to click. You're the one millionth click. Exactly. And, that, so yeah. to me, that's yeah. like uh, hard sales, right? Like, I, your videos, you can call them to have like a video, like you know, like watch our like video blogs instead of like having it on your front page. And be like, look at our businesses instead of them having to scroll right there, like you know, to have a tab that has like all your businesses listed. Guys, I'll take any feedback you got. I mean, absolutely any feedback. And and I've got the group doing the usability usability analysis. So I get that our user interface is not great, but I want to hear anything you have to say. And because we're right here, we can make these changes. You know? Do you know uh, how many um, how many hits you get a day on your website? Uh, let's see here. So we got we in 2019 we had 17,000. Okay, so um, not very nice. Yeah, 70,100, oh, something like that. Per day? No, 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 no. Overall. Yeah. Okay. Per day, oh, you're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, no, and uh, we got, like, they looked at 46,000 page views. Okay. For that. How were they getting there? Was it organic search, or was it from Facebook, or do you know how they were getting to the Yes, website? it's organic. It's, it's organic. organic. Or direct. Yeah. Which means that we're not getting anything from social at all. Okay. Do you have, yeah. like, That's I know this blog, we're just talking about this, but you know this blog up there? Yeah. But do you have like a website that people can go to to read women's blogs or your blogs or you know someone that's like reading these blogs about women empowerment? I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so no, what we what we found here right now is we've just got our own blog, and and I get you guys. I'm a one man band right now. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, so we we put our newsletter up there. We put you know I have I've had these are people that are customers, for example, doing. Doing articles for us. That's what I do when we first put it up. Is I had a bunch of business owners write me articles. We could do a lot more with that. Do people go and look at those? What, I mean, what's your numbers on those? Um, you know, I don't have the data on that. Yeah. I mean, that can really help you. Yeah. And, and go ahead. Um, there's a there's an extension that I have that like shows if there's a Facebook pixel, and I'm not seeing one on the site. And that's something we could add that can help us retarget for ads on Facebook, Instagram, and all like Facebook owned social platforms. Yeah. And that can also track traffic on websites through different pages and can also monitor like, uh, like hotspots that people are clicking on and see if there's like areas that people are avoiding or clicking on more. And they can help us redesign it and uh, it's free to like add that extension Love it. to your website. So that's like a first thing that I think we should do. Okay. That's good. That's good. I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm going to... This is beyond my understanding. I believe. <laughs> yeah. But I you're running this hot jar for a little while, so I saw where people were clicking. Go ahead. You're running all it through all of that through a company in India. Right. And how yeah. responsive are they? Uh, the, sort of the, the 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 ones in India that do the website semi responsive. Okay. But you you feed them the content, so yeah. they're not writing anything. No. Okay. You're just giving them something to put them on the website, and they put it up. Yeah. So guys, this this is based on brilliant directories. The reason why we were able to build the directory so fast is it's almost like a WordPress toolkit for directories is what we've got, um, and that's all they do. So they're pretty fast at it. So, but it's it's taken, it's tough to communicate with them. And so what I've actually done is mark up our pages of our website, send it to them, and then they'll make the changes based on the markups. They've, the group that I've got working with us now, Zion, they're data experts. She's out of OU. She owns a company here. And Reflections is a group that has like 300 developers and business analysts in India. And they'll be working on our Google Chrome extension and our, our apps. So I think we got a lot higher level of skill set. Yeah. yeah. Why are you doing this? Uh, price. Okay. Yeah. How many downloads uh, on your app for my Lassama consumer? 
How many, how many people have downloaded? Yeah, it's 1,000 total. Maybe. Okay, so that's your big problem. Yeah. yeah you got a lot of businesses, anything. you don't have any consumers. Yeah. All right. Is there any reason you're focusing so much on an extension rather yeah. than like other like avenues? Okay, so the extension is the one of the ways that we're making money right, right. now. It's not a lot of money, but right. And and it, when we went to Carnegie Mellon and we were asking these e-commerce kids what to do, they're the ones who came up with the extension idea. What do you think we should do? Well, um, I mean, just like thinking about it, more people are going not towards like desktop. They're more searching on their phone and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Right. And you right. can't really install extensions, so. I know, I know. I, we were wondering, I was wondering about that this morning, if there's an extension-like thing that you can put on a phone. I mean, basically a lot of sites have referral codes, yeah. and I think that would be a lot better for your situation mm -hmm. rather than trying to dump more money into an extension. Yeah, people can't, really don't even have a lot of devices to use it, probably. Yeah. Well, I think the extension isn't a bad idea. I think if it's advertised on the right platforms that people are using desktop, like uh, Honey itself is advertised super heavy on YouTube. A lot of people watch YouTube on a desktop. Yeah, exactly. So it's super easy to like watch that video, see an ad or a sponsored video from it, go to the extension store and plug it in. So that's what I did. I got money on here because I saw it on YouTube that, and I feel like half of Every YouTube video that is sponsored is a honey sponsored video. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, guys, the other thing they're doing, this is something we talked about. Are you guys asked me about influencers. Um, a kid that I talked to the other day said the way honey has done it is that they are finding the um, influencers' sponsors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We could do the same thing. We could do the absolute same thing. And there's so many like makeup artists and like women bloggers mm -hmm. and like just women on YouTube channels mm -hmm. that are on YouTube that would take like a, a low budget sponsorship for a video and it presents this video is sponsored by First Power, you download the extension link in the description and like a lot of the viewers that will see that on the desktop so they can take that and I'm sure it'd be a higher conversion rate than another ad like say Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. And a lot of those bloggers too or bloggers or influencers or whatever like they do all look bad on social. Like yeah. Instagram, like I can look through my stories probably right now and find one and be like, hey, like, wow, I'm using Trula or whatever that face company is. Like, this is a new face company that's come out. Or, you know, like, like I was saying about earlier, like Arbonne. And I just click through my freaking Instagram and every single woman right now is doing Arbonne. And it's all, it's like 90% women. So it's just like, that's just what the thing is now. You could totally pay, you know, a vlogger a hundred bucks and they pay me to do this and they would do it and totally say it video for you. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if we can be the ones who are tying together the business owners that want influencers, it seems like that should be value added. And then what they, they said about Honey is now all of the Honey influencers are talking to each other. And Honey's the platform because they're getting sponsorship out of it. What's your demographics? Funny enough, 40% 40, 40 male and 60% female. To your website? Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, it seemed like, yeah. it, I don't know, it seemed like you're not know, like really targeted towards the younger people. I don't know. So, so the, your great point, we get, one, is it 25 to 34 year olds is our primary group? And then 35 to 44 year olds is our secondary group. And how so are they getting there off the phone, going back to the previous comment about phone versus the desktop, are they primarily doing mobile? Mobile view? No, surprisingly no. So, so That's and, and, and again, because our thing works better, on the desktop, I think that's part of the reason why. But we, we, um, I can get you guys all that data. So we, we okay. do have the desktop and mobile and tablet. I've got the split up. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, that would be interesting to see. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so male, female. I give you that. And they, we've got primarily, obviously, in the United States, but we do have people all over the world looking at us. And and occasionally, I get people signing up from Japan and the UK and Germany. Yeah. Okay. So, but your conversion rate is horrible if you've only got if you're getting all these people coming to the website and then you're only getting a thousand to go download the app. So I mean, you're doing really well with um, getting the businesses. Well, I mean, the businesses, you got to remember, guys, we got at the businesses. It's one of those models like Yelp has where people have to claim them. Yeah. So we're saying we think these are the women-owned businesses, but we want them to claim their business. Okay. Um, yeah. It still seems to be your biggest issue is you don't have enough people on there. Do you have the on app, app on yeah. there somewhere uh, that someone can click and like look at it? So well, the app being the phone app? Yeah, like you have like download our app. Uh, that's what that arrow is. We're oh. those are our tools is what we're trying to do with that. So you only have an app. Uh, oh, 
an iOS app? We only have an app for Apple. No, we actually have an app for Android, but it hasn't been working, so I took it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but well, we got one for Android. Yeah. Okay, what's the plan to fix that? Uh, I'm working. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So I was looking for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys, it, so just for reference, so that the app looks like there's more to it than this. I wish I'd, I, I have a PowerPoint. I can send you guys. It's got more stuff. Okay. But uh, so here are the the businesses on the map, right? And then somebody can click on it and want see it in a list. And then the other thing that you don't know about is that they can put shampoo in, and it'll show them the brands of shampoo that a woman owns. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. At a grocery store. That's, so, that's really cool. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's a pretty cool app. I mean, now that you've shown it to me, I'm going to go download it. But I, before, I didn't see the sense in it. But, but I think this is what the major issue. It's an education thing for the consumer. Yeah. How do you get the consumer to recognize the value enough to go download it? Yeah. So yeah. also, I'm still so talking about that. But your forty percent male audience. Where is that coming from? Like companies or consumers or like where's that coming from? I don't, I don't have that answer. I don't know how to get at that on Google Analytics, but it, it might be there. I just don't know how to get it. So do you get the forty percent mail off of Google, Google Analytics? Yeah. Do you get? Do you have geographic breakdown? Is it East Coast, West Coast, or is it across the country? Or is, is it? Well, okay. So again, the geographic stuff cities. that I've seen is is it's just got the U.S. and Alaska, and you know, it's just got the country. It doesn't have. If you so you if you can expand that, so okay. you can you should be able to get a lot a lot more, a lot more information. About you okay. should be able to get by six. Okay. Okay. So so the emphasis. I mean, you guys went, like when I do a LinkedIn post or whatever. I am getting people from around the nation looking at it. Um, the primary activity here is here in Tulsa, but. San Francisco and Houston and Dallas and Denver and you know we've got people from around the U.S. looking at it. But to your point, it's big cities primarily. Do you do like a call to action, like go download the app? Do you do a, or what is your call to action? When yeah. You... Yeah. So I think I mean it's two week. I get it's two week. Right? So it's like this. That's what this is. I mean that's what that is. When okay. get people download the app. Yeah. And and the other thing is when we go to the. So here, you know, we're trying to explain what it is. We get people to download it, and in, in our newsletter, we're putting it in there. We got all the buttons to have them download things. I've, I've got about just for reference, guys. I've got about probably 36, 3700 people on our email distribution list that have signed up. And we put the pop up on the, the website. We're now capturing a lot more email addresses out of that. You said you went to the March with all the buttons. Are you continuously going to events like that and continuing? Well. I, I have uh, so just for reference we did the march last year and um, so these are all the cities that we went to we didn't do it this year though so what we did is we took this this uh, wall the selfie wall mm -hmm. around the US in eight different cities and we, we had about 1300 people take their picture in front of our wall so with the buttons I might have missed this but like do you guys still hand them out or give them out, or is it just like that one march or whatever? No, I do. I do still give out the buttons if people will take the buttons. And and if you guys have recommendations on chashkis, I mean, I get I get that these are kind of old school, right? But what I was trying to do is get people when you're looking at your computer, yeah. you're at your desktop, to think about us. But if you guys have recommendations about other things that would be more attractive, do you have a budget? Like if they were to come up with ideas, yeah, uh, you know, between three and five thousand. Okay, and that for like just for the promotional items, or like do you have a promotional budget overall? I don't. Once you get them to tell me how they think it ought to be spent. So if I gave you five thousand dollars, how would you spend it? Can we do that? Well, we can, but if you say we don't want to make recommendations of a hundred thousand when you're talking eight eight thousand. Yeah. So if you can give us ballpark, that helps. Well, so what I was trying to do is I was trying to say if I gave you five thousand dollars. Okay. What could you do? Okay, is that in the fact as a budget? That's fine. Yeah, that's okay. I just want to know if we're talking five thousand or fifty thousand. No, five thousand. Okay. Point unless unless I get some major investment. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So so there's there's some things that are coming up that you know we we've, we've got people looking at us and people are intrigued by what we're doing. Um, there's a rise of the rest. Have you guys heard of that? They're, they're uh, coming through the middle of the United States. They've decided that they need to get some companies outside of Silicon Valley and New York and Boston. And so they're coming to the middle of the United States in April, and they're looking for uh, companies to support. 
and uh, we're all competing for it and get to pitch for capital. I just got done doing the startup grind out in Silicon Valley. Uh, there were 4,000 companies applied, 300 were selected to exhibit. We were one of the ones that were, were selected. So, I mean, I, I get that we've got some work to do, guys. We really do. And, and it's a good idea. It's an intriguing idea to a lot of people. Yeah. Well, it'll be a great semester project. It, it, there's a lot to it. I think it. I think we'll have a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll uh, come up with some decent ideas. So if they have questions, then do you want them to contact you directly, or you yes. want them to go through me? And do you want to give them an email, to, or would it be on the website, or is it on uh, the yeah, I'm just going to see if I've got cards. Um, so it's uh, dmiller at firstpower.com. That should be easy to remember. And why don't I send you the deck, too, the, the, like the deck that we're using? Okay. I think that would help, too. And then uh, my phone number, guys, is 405 9289 All right. Well, we'll have you back in a couple of months, and uh, and you can hear their ideas. Okay. I'd like to throw some kind of party. Have something. <laughs> and then the other thing is, I, I don't know if you have any interest. What would they find valuable? Like, I, you guys, I can give you visibility with some key people. I could bring some of my board members. I could bring some of my investors in, and you could you could do a readout to them. And these are big women in town. That could give you a job. What do you think about that? Okay, that's an interesting idea. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you. We appreciate thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.